Welcome to the gentlest intro to TensorFlow. My name is Cor. We are going to perform linear regression in its most basic form using TensorFlow. More precisely, we are going to predict the house price with just a single feature, that is the house size. We are going to walk through four steps of machine learning, but more importantly, we are going to show how this four steps collapse into two parts of TensorFlow, namely how to create a model as TensorFlow graph and then train the TensorFlow graph with our data set. Machine learning in its most basic form has the goal of predicting something given a set of features that influences the prediction. For instance, we can predict the house price given its size, location, configuration, etc., which are the features. Before predicting, we have to create and choose a model. And then we have to train the model to learn prediction with the data that we have. In our problem, we are going to predict the house price, which is y, given the house size, which is a feature, and it's called x. What is exactly a model? If we were to ask what is the price of a 50 square meter house, we have no answer because we don't have any data. If we go outside and collect some data, then we can answer the house price for 10, 20, 30, 50, 60 square meters because we have those data points. But we cannot answer what is the price for 40 square meters because we do not have the data point. Using linear regression, we can draw a straight line that best fit our data. With that, we can then predict the answer for 40 square meters. Similarly, we can use a different model, for instance, exponential model which has a curve to predict uh, to best fit our data and it will give us a prediction of what is the price for 40 square meters. However, we will get a different answer. This brings us to the question, which is a better model? To answer that, we need to define the cost function. By minimizing the difference between predicted and actual values, we can find what is the best model. In our linear regression case, the cost is actually the difference between the actual point, which is the black dot, and the predicted values, which is the projection of the black dots onto the red line. Now, if we sum up all the differences, which are the blue lines, it will be the cost of this linear regression model. For an exponential model, we can repeat the same thing. By summing up all the blue lines, we can get the cost of this exponential model. Mathematically, the cost function is defined as the sum of the squares of the difference between the actual and uh, predicted values. The reason why we square the difference is because sometimes the actual values can be greater than the predicted values and vice versa. So the best model is the one that has the minimum cost. In our example, we are going to choose the linear regression model. Linear regression can be represented as y equals to wx plus b. Linear regression is also used in the original TensorFlow tutorial. Now, given the house size from a data set, which is x, if we have a good w and b, then we can get a good prediction of y, which is the house price. By tweaking w, which is the gradient of the line or linear regression model, we can find the best fit. Similarly, we can also tweak the value of b 
to move the linear regression model up and down to find the best fit. When we talk about training a model, basically we are just talking about finding the best W and V. To train, we usually loop through um, maybe J times, which can be arbitrary, and each time we choose a W and B, which we call current W and current B. We calculate the cost incurred by with this current W and current B, compare it with the existing best cost, and if it is lower, then the current W and current B will become the best W and best B. The question now is what is the best way to choose current W and current B? If we could have solved the cost function, then we can easily see where is the best W and best B. Unfortunately, most of the time, cost functions are difficult to solve, so we just start somewhere, for instance, at the rate position. From the viewpoint of the rate position, we cannot tell which direction we should go to reach the minimum. If we take random steps, this could go on forever. How we can also choose to use gradient descent, which means that from our current viewpoint, we move towards the direction where the steepness downwards is the greatest. And we repeat this time and time again until we hit the minimum. So now we are ready. We have chosen a model, which is a linear regression model. We have defined our cost function, which enables us to compare which models are better. And then we have chosen a training method, which is gradient descent to enable us us to find the best W and B. We are going to use TensorFlow to model our linear regression model. We use tf.placeholder. TF is an abbreviation of TensorFlow. tf.placeholder is going to hold all the data that we are going to fit into the model. These are the actual data for, in this case, X. We will be holding the actual data for the house size. We use tf.variable to hold variables that are going to be trained, in this case w and b. We use tf operations such as tf.matmal to do matrix multiplication. We can also use Python operators such as plus to do summation. Finally, doing all this enables us to create a model y equals to w times x plus b. Next, we have to create the cost function. Again, we need actual house prices and we are going to store them in a placeholder, in this case y underscore. The cost function we can create using operators such as tf.reducesum and tf.power which is just a uh, power of 2, that is a square, and which is the difference between y underscore, which is the actual value, and y, which is the predicted values. Next, we need data. Since we don't have actual data, we are going to fake data. We are going to create 100 pairs of data where x is just 0 to 99, and y is just 2 times the value of x so it will be just 0 to 198. We know that the best fit, the best linear regression model that can fit this data is then y equals to 2x. That is, w is equal to 2 and b is equal to 0. Now we are going to train the model. To train the model, we have chosen the gradient descent method and we can specify the gradient descent step size and ask it to minimize the cost that we have defined. Once we have finished modeling all this, the next step is actually to run. To run, in TensorFlow, you need to create a session using tf.session, and we always need to initialize all variables using tf.initialize all variables. Note that TensorFlow always operates in non-interactive mode by default which means nothing is actually executed until you call session.run. And we are ready. 
So we loop through maybe a hundred times or two hundred times. We feed the actual um, house size into x, the house price into y underscore, and then put it uh, pass it to train step. Let me print out each iteration. What is the w and b? The result. After 100 iterations, you can see that W is 1.997, B is equal to 0 0.05, and they are pretty close to the ideal value of W equals to 2 and B equals to 0. So we have finished modeling and training our TensorFlow model. Let's talk about what can go wrong. When you Choose a training method, for instance, gradient descent, it has some arguments that you can provide. For gradient descent, this will be the gradient descent step size. If you specify a step size that is too big, what happens is that you can never get an answer. The reason is that in gradient descent, you start at a position, you, take, you look around and this, choose, the, choose the direction where the gradient descent is the steepest downwards. So in this case, it's steepest to the right. Now, the gradient descent step size will determine how big a step you take in the direction before you repeat the process of surveying steepness again. So you take a big step and then you walk to this direction. Now, when you do gradient descent again, you're going to look around and determine that, oh, the steepest um, descent downwards is still to the right. However, because we took a too big a step, now we have overshot the uh, local, um, the minimum. Now, when you do gradient descent again, you're going to look around and determine that um, the steepest descent downwards is to my left. So you're going to take another big step to the left. And again, you have overshot the minimum. And now you're going to do a gradient descent and you're going to decide that um, the steepest descent downwards is to the right. And you overshot it again. So you will eventually, you will not be able to converge to a minimum. So some other problems that you may have will be like missing placeholders. Now we have, in this case, you can see that when we feed x and y data into the train step, we wrongly specify, we wrongly assign the house price to the variable y instead of y underscore. TensorFlow is going to complain that it expects some values in placeholder 1. Now what is placeholder 1? When we create the model, we define x first which is placeholder 0. And then later we create y as a placeholder, y underscore as a placeholder. Now that's placeholder 1. So when it's complaining about placeholder, it's actually complaining about y underscore. To make debugging easier, what you can do is that when you define placeholders, you can give it a name. In this case, name equals y input. So when there is an error with um, assigning values to placeholder, TensorFlow will tell you the actual um, placeholder name so that it enables easy debugging. Another common issue will be the wrong shape. In this case, you can see the XS is supposed to be a 1 by 1 matrix, but instead we wrongly define it as uh, 1 comma nothing. And because of that, TensorFlow is going to complain that, oh, it's trying to assign a X to a placeholder that does not match the shape. And as you can see, x, the expected shape is none, under, uh, none comma 1, which means that it expects it to have a, um, a batch size and uh, called one column. But what you're trying to provide it with is that it doesn't have any columns. So one simple way to find out uh, about values when something goes wrong is to actually use a print statement print out the session run uh, variable. So we're going to now compare between these 
Gentle's TensorFlow tutorial with the actual tutorial. In this tutorial, our purpose is to find the house price, which is a float value. In the TensorFlow tutorial, we are trying to classify an image. We are trying to perform classifications whether an image is 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth. So the why, what we are trying to predict is just a house price, which is a float value. In TensorFlow tutorial, we are trying to predict what is the image. And the image representation that we use is what we call a one-hot vector for 10 possible values. A one-hot vector looks like what is uh, written in blue on the right. In this case, you can see the since um, it's trying to represent 10 possible values, um, the number of rows, the number of elements is 10. And if the image is 4, then only the fourth element from the top will be 1. The rest will be 0. This is a one-hot vector. X, which is the, in, this, in our case, is just the house size. So again, it's just a float value. The sample or the data that we use in the actual TensorFlow tutorial is an image. And each image is a 28 by 28 bit image. If we flatten it, it will become a 1 by 784 bit image. And each bit can be 0 or 1 if it's a black and white image, or some values if it's a color image. So the number of features in the TensorFlow tutorial, actual TensorFlow tutorial, is 784, which is much more. So the W that we have really depends on the number of outcome and the number of features that we have. So in our gentlest TensorFlow tutorial, there's only a single outcome, single feature, whereas in the TensorFlow tutorial, there are like um, 784 features and 10 possible outcomes. Finally, for bias, um, depends on um, the outcome. So in, in our case, there's only one in TensorFlow's tutorial, actual tutorial, there are 10. The cost function that's been used is also different. We use square of difference. TensorFlow tutorial use entropy base. And finally, the grade, when we're doing gradient descent, we are only using one sample of x, y at a single time. Whereas in the TensorFlow tutorial, each training consists of 100 samples of images. So in summary, we build a model which can be linear regression, logistic regression, etc. using TensorFlow. Then we define the cost function to determine how well each model fits the data. We have to collect and prepare the data that we can then use to train, to tweak the model to minimize the cost function. In TensorFlow, we have used all these functions that is TF0 to create a zero matrices. We have placeholders to hold actual data from our data set. We have TF variable to hold variables that we are going to train. We have many um, TensorFlow operations such as matrix multiplication, reduce sum, um, power. And in TensorFlow, we have like many different types of training methods. What we have introduced is just gradient descent. Once you have finished modeling, we have to do the training where we initialize all the variables. We have to create a session to actually run the initialization and run the actual training. So one of the interesting questions that we got is that why don't we just use numpy dot, dot instead of using TensorFlow's metric multiplication? One reason is that TensorFlow's operations can be each assigned to a different node. If you have a machine with multiple nodes, this enables operations to be carried out in parallel to speed up calculations. So the code for references is available here. Thank you very much for listening.